Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and in this short video, our first video in our series of videos uh, dealing with how to, how to, I suppose, estimate the required sample size for specific uh, hypothesis tests that you might want to undertake. I suppose in this particular video we're going to be concentrating on uh, the T statistic family of tests, uh, and more importantly, really in situations where we want to we want to do undertake a single sample T test or an independent samples T test or a paired samples T test, uh, which is the dependent samples T test. So any of them situations, the question that we might have in our in our mind a priori before we even do the experiment is how many participants do I require so that I can observe uh, an effect of a particular size if it actually is there. In other words, so that we can actually achieve a certain amount of power with respect to our experiment. And also, we're going to set the alpha level, the probability of committing type 1 uh, uh, error rates and so on. So, I'm using G star power here. So, here's G star power. And uh, when you open it up, this is what you get. Okay? Uh, you get a, an area here that allows you to select the family of tests that you want to undertake. You can see if I use the, hit the drop down uh, menu here, I have T tests, F tests, exact tests, chi square tests, and Z tests. We're just concentrating on T tests here. Uh, here under statistical test gives us a list of tests that produce a T statistic. Okay, uh, so you can see the point by serial um, uh, correlation here, uh, linear bivariate regressions and multiple regressions uh, in a fixed model situation. But really, what we're interested in is we're interested in these three uh, tests here. Uh, this one at the bottom here is the means, which is the difference from a constant. So this is a one sample T test. This one here, which is a difference between two independent samples. So that's an independent samples t-test and this one here the difference between two dependent samples or two dependent means which is a matched or paired or dependent samples t-test we're just going to concentrate on these three in this video in the next video we'll look at a different family of tests okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the simplest one uh, first of all which is a single sample test I'm going to select that so this is the single sample test the family it's associated with is t-tests and what type of power analysis do I want to do? Well, it allows us to do many different types of power analysis. Uh, a priori means before we do the experiment. Post hoc means after we do the experiment and we want to check the achieved power. Uh, so in this situation, we're looking for a priori. We want to compute the required sample size given an alpha. That's the probability of committing a type 1 uh, uh, error. The power. Uh, I suppose in this case the power is our ability to observe something if it actually is there and the effect size which is what we're trying to observe the bang is it a small little firecracker or is it a nuclear explosion if that makes sense uh, how big is the effect between between uh, between uh, the samples uh, that have been drawn from the populations okay and that's actually what we're going to go for now is a priori compute required sample size given an alpha given the power and given the required effect size so I'm going to click on that and you can see actually what we have now is we have our input parameters are here and uh, it's asking you whether the test is a single tail test in other words do you want to test to see whether whether your your group is greater than a specific value do you want to test to see whether it's less than a specific value uh, if that's the case well then it's a one tail test if you do want to test to see whether your group is just different to a spe uh, specific value uh, well then we'd choose two tails but in this case let's just go for a one tail test Okay. How big of an effect are we trying to observe? Now this is important. So I mean this is actually it's not that it's complicated. It's actually an unusual thing to ask yourself. Well, actually I'm doing this experiment. It's my first time to do this experiment. I don't know the size of the effect. But actually in most cases what we need to do is we need to go through the literature and we need to probably identify people that have done a similar experiment uh, and actually have a look at the 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 observed statistics that well the the the, the values that they've observed in relation to let's say averages means uh, and see can we estimate the effect size that we're trying to observe and um, the effect size here is a Cohen's D effect uh, and I suppose if you just hover over that field there where I am right here you can see that it tells us some examples so D is equal to 0.2 is a small effect D is equal to 0.5 is a medium effect and D equal to 0.8 is a large effect 
So anything less than 0.2 uh, is classified as it's there's no effect in place or it's very, very, very small. Between 0.2 and 0.5 is small, between 0.5 and 0.8 is medium, and greater than 0.8 is large. So let's just but let's just set this as if it was a large effect. So let's just set it at 0.8, okay? Uh, the typical alpha level that we would that we would choose.